are new to this room are a lot of the attorneys that are here. So raise your hand if you haven't been involved in this food space at all. Okay, so half the people in this room, this is new. <coughs> so I want to be one of the first people to welcome you to a wonderful community and an experience like almost no other in Rhode Island. I actually bridge um, the legal community and the food space in my work both at Open Maine and at Roger Williams University because Roger Williams has the best law school in Rhode Island as well. <laughs> um, and uh, interestingly, when I was, so Open Maine started in 2009, um, with this, with sort of a, what I thought was a crazy idea, but but it came from what is now the 10-year-old, five-year egg plan for the state. So that's what we were looking at when we when we started Open Maine. So there really wasn't a food plan yet, but there was an egg plan. So always before food comes egg, right? So the senator knows that, and Jen knows that, um, Kate knows that. This is, you know, food comes from agriculture. And yes, you know, the, the uh, uh, farmers in Rhode Island are also small businessmen and women, right? And the, you know, the challenges that the farmers faced, even as that sector was growing, we could anticipate would be the same issues that the, um, that small food producers were going to face. And yet, when we went to look for an attorney, and I asked around, and I said, are, are there any attorneys that are working in the food space in Rhode Island? And the answer was no. I, I literally couldn't find anybody, and I was very fortunate to be introduced to Seth Handy, whereas he's usually, yeah, he's sitting down. If he was standing up, you would have seen him right away. <laughs> um, so Seth and, and Helen Anthony, um, uh, you know, came from energy, but but I think we're, we're such great um, partners with us in starting uh, Hope in Maine and issues that you know we face because in essence we're a startup of startups in a startup industry in Rhode Island. Right now, there can't be any better opportunity for the attorneys in the room. There can't be a better opportunity. I can't say that I could have done better than Seth and Helen because I don't think I could. Uh, they have been phenomenal, but we've all been on this learning curve together. So we're all at the same starting line together. And you know what what the Legal Food Hub is about is about access. And Roger Williams University, the, the law school, has been thinking about access across myriad issues. Um, for you know, for two decades really. That that's what the what the law school was was found on. So we can look to models like the pro bono collaborative at the law school, where the law school is working with attorneys in the community um, to create access to justice. And my colleague here, Katie Ahern, um, who has just been brilliant at the helm of the uh, business startup clinic at the law school. Um, is a shining example of the promise of the Legal Food Hub because Katie has been bringing her students from the law school to Open Maine for two years now. So as the businesses that are Open Maine have been looking at issues of trade uh, mark and trade secret, um, so I, I don't know if you know this, but in, in, you can't patent recipe. That's not that's not what you can do in the food business. That's why Coke keeps the recipe in a safe somewhere, right? Um, so, but if you combine a trademark with a trade secret, you have something that isn't easily reverse engineered. So, those are some of the lessons that our, you know, that our makers have been able to learn because of you know uh, Katie's student team. Um, Issues of partnership and contracts. So many husbands and wives and brothers and sisters and people that think they're going to be buddies forever or start a food business and you know and, and we try to tell them at the very beginning you you know you need to talk to an attorney right now why you still like each other um, and uh, you know food safety as uh, the senator mentioned uh, licensing you know 
when we first encountered people, they were telling us that they were actually afraid to start their business because they really didn't even know where the landmines were. And they didn't, they, it's not that people are trying to do things illegally, they don't, they didn't understand, right? Um, and some of them had been at it for over a year trying to start their business. What, what Hope and Maine has been able to do with the help of people like Katie is, is really streamline that on ramp to, to get people going. So there are now 60 active, two years there's 60 active businesses there. And there's over 200 businesses in the pipeline that are in some uh, way getting to, the, uh, getting to the starting line. Yet, attorneys, that's a lot of business for all of you. These are people that right now, many of them cannot afford legal services, um, but these businesses are going to, some of them are going to break out, some of them are going to be very, very successful. And as, um, as I think um, Bradley said, you know, new ideas need good friends, and you cannot have a better friend than your attorney. I was, I said, when I see my attorney coming, I want to have a bumper sticker on my car that says, I part my attorney. <laughs> I love those guys because they've done so much for us, and you know, I, I'm going to get those bumper stickers made. Um, so, you know, don't ever forget that access to your services for these businesses is access to justice because that's where businesses start in Rhode Island, and I, I just think this is a, is a wonderful thing, and I want to congratulate everybody here and, and just say how much we look forward to working.